So now let's just look at a careful, take a careful look at the scoring on question number three. So uh, here's for part A. Um, <clears throat> we get one point just for breaking the integral up into the two parts. So, but you, you need to write that down to get that point. So I wrote that down. Um, if you didn't write this down explicitly, but you ended up with this answer, they're probably going to assume that you used this um, in some way. So you might not have necessarily written exactly like this. Uh, maybe you, um, you know, put the, maybe you had it solved for this integral right here. One way or another, you used this idea. That's worth one point. And then you get one point for getting the integral from negative two to five, that's this part. So in other words, if we had done this idea right and messed up the integral because we subtracted something wrong, we still would have gotten the first point, but we wouldn't have gotten to the second point or the third point because the answer depends on our getting this right. So uh, to get the answer, negative four plus nine pi over four, um, oh. Yeah, uh, negative 4 plus 9 pi over 4, which they wrote 9 pi over 4 minus 4. Just getting that answer is correct. And notice, by the way, we didn't have to. I mentioned not simplifying this part, so you could leave it. You could leave that like that if you wanted. To me, that was just a little cumbersome um, to leave it that way. All right, so that was part A was a three-point uh, question. Then part B... Um, we get one point for using fundamental theorem of calculus. In other words, we get one point for changing this guy into this. And then we get one point for the answer. So pretty much you're going to have to get that all right in order to, to get it. Um, notice again, though, um, that we can leave our answer like this. That's how I encouraged you to leave your answer. That's a good way to leave your answer. Um, but if you were curious, it simplifies to 2 plus 2 square root 5. But remember, you have the potential of losing some point if you um, simplified it wrong. So we get just one point for fundamental theorem and one point for the answer, so that was worth two. Then when we get to part C, all right, so we had a lot of parts of this. So we're not surprised that there's three points on it. So it's sort of interesting how the points are broken down. You get one point just for saying that g prime of x equals f of x. So I could have gotten everything wrong. And as long as I've written this right here, and I wrote it down because it was something that occurred to me, something I knew was a key to the problem, I wrote it down, I could have gotten everything else wrong and still gotten one out of three points just for knowing that. So that's why we like to show what we know on these. Then you get a point for identifying x equals negative 1. So as long as we somewhere in here notice that x equals negative 1, even without any justification, as long as we identify it, once we know have x equals negative 1, we've got another point. So we already had one point here, we already had one point here, there's only one point left to get, and that's everything else. So on everything else, that means answer with justification. So you're, so if you got the right answer down here, but you're justificate, uh, where's our answer to that one is here. If we got that, that's correct answer, um, but our justification is off, we get no points even for having the correct answer. Um, so that's why it was important for us to justify why um, G prime changes. Um, why, why x equals negative 1 is a critical point. So another thing I noticed that they did was they, there's no point for this, but they also identified x equals 1 half. We did not identify x equals 1 half because according to the graph, um, x equals 1 half is, uh, at x equals 1 half, there's a relative minimum. So that it, g could not have a max at x equals one half because x equals one half is a relative minimum. Um, they included it in their list anyway because it's a critical point. However, there's no point involved in identifying that, and you don't need it. So I I think that was not necessary to do. And then here's our you know answer: the absolute max is uh, eleven minus nine pi over four. Um, notice how. It says answer with justification, but they don't really have a whole lot of justification here. All they have is the table of values. They identify of critical points. Um, the um, I did the setting of g prime to zero. That's all they've done for justification. So I added to that just the fact that we knew that the x equals negative one was a potential maximum because g prime changes positive to negative. So I added that justification in. They apparently didn't need it, but I think you definitely should put that in. 
And then for part D uh, is just one point because it, it was simple. All you had to do is plug in the one. So there was nothing else to do and there's nothing else to point to. They did not say by substitution like I did, but I think it's always good on the AP exam to be really explicit with all your justifications of everything. Uh, so I did that and I don't regret it a bit. And so that's how our points fall out for number three. Right, Gertie? You think that's you think that was a good you think that was a good explanation, Gertie? Did you get number three? You gonna, which one are you gonna try now? No, oh, you're a cutie.